the uh, the publication of the 1700 page report comes more than seven years after the fire took hold and spread through the cladding of that tower block in West London. One of the people who escaped the fire was Tiago Alves. What I actually want from this report is truth written down on a page, something that we can point to and say, this is what the truth is, this is what happened, and these are the companies or entities responsible for what happened that night. Certainly wouldn't want to speak for him or any of the other uh, families, but, I mean, you'd hope that um, this is pretty blunt and, and it will be welcomed uh, but it's what happens next, isn't it? That's that's the important thing. Uh, but basically, the report says successive governments ignored, delayed or disregarded concerns about the safety of industry practices. Manufacturers of cladding and insulation products deliberately concealed the fire risks that they posed. Uh, the way building safety is managed in England and Wales, we mentioned this earlier on, is seriously defective and complex and fragmented. So... I mean, that's not going to give you much confidence if you live in a building like this. Uh, The fire broke out, if you remember, just before 1am in a kitchen of a fourth floor flat and within minutes it had raced up the exterior of the building and engulfed the uh, the entire tower block. By 3am, most of the upper floors were well alight. Um, a little bit earlier on, I spoke to Paula Shalou, who's from the End Our Cladding Scandal campaign group. Obviously, I should point out, I spoke to her before the, the, the fullness of this had come out, so uh, we don't really talk about the, you know, the, the announcement. But I did talk to her about how important this report is for people living in homes that are now blighted by this kind of dangerous cladding. If I could just say, first and foremost, our thoughts today are naturally with the Grenfell bereaved and survivors. They desperately need and deserve justice, and it's been a long time coming. But the report that's been published today is hopefully an important step in holding to account whoever was responsible for the loss of 72 innocent lives. So that's the first thing to say. Yeah, cool. Um, In terms of where we are now, uh, the truth is that the actual size of the crisis remains unknown. But what we do know is that hundreds of thousands of people across the country are still living in unsafe buildings. And that's buildings with defective cladding and with a host of other fire safety defects um, internally as well. So the official number is 256,000 in blocks with unsafe cladding, but we believe that this could actually be as high as 600,000 in reality. That's an enormous amount, isn't it? And, and what kind of issues is that causing people in those buildings? Well, I mean, the impact is really horrendous because, I mean, let's not forget that behind all the statistics are ordinary people who've been ye- spent years living with this crisis and it has a huge toll on um, people's mental health. Um, and, you know, the fire in Dagenham just last week has brought it all yeah. to the forefront of everyone's mind again. Um, when Angela Rayner visited Dagenham, she actually said, you know, these are not assets, these are people's homes and people need to feel safe in their own homes. And that's exactly right. But the reality is that thousands of people don't feel safe in their homes and they go to bed every night worried mm-hmm. about how they would escape if their building caught fire. So, I mean, there's, there's that bit of it, isn't there, of course, which I suppose is the primary bit, feeling unsafe in your own home but then there's the 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 financial issues many of the houses you can't get a mortgage on them can you You can't sell them no that's absolutely right um so you know people can't sell their flats they can't move on so they're trapped in in every sense of the word um the other thing too is that they've you know we've all been paying a lot of extra money for you know in terms of safety measures buildings insurance has absolutely skyrocketed it's gone up by as much as a thousand percent in some instances and that's something that, you know, until now, the government has just relied on the insurers to come up with a solution. But instead, unfortunately, they seem to be profiteering. So, yeah, so there's been a big financial hit as well as the, you know, mental stress aspect. And, and as you said rightly at the start of this, this is, you know, of course, for, for, mo- for mostly about the poor people who lost their lives in this. I mean, it, this isn't the end to it, though, is it? Because there won't be any criminal proceedings directly from this. I mean, that's another delay. That's another wait, isn't it? Absolutely. And unfortunately, that will also take years. But at the very least, th- this, this will identify, you know, accountability, hopefully. And it'll also outline the systemic failures that, that led, you know, to such horrific consequences. So, you know, the inadequate uh, regulation, control of the construction sector, mm. uh, because the reality is that successive governments deregulated, they cut red tape, they ignored multiple warnings. Yeah. So all of that needs to come out as well. But you're absolutely right. It will be, unfortunately, a wait of probably several more years before people really see justice and before there are you know, serious consequences and charges brought. Uh, and just you saying there about cutting red tape and, and, and relaxing regulation, I mean, the, the new government, the Labour government, has said a lot about home building and um, speeding that up and, and getting as many homes built as quickly as possible. Is there a worry that we, we might fall into the same trap again? 
Absolutely. And that's the one thing that can't be allowed to happen. I mean, the, the, the Labour government needs to step up now and really get a grip of this crisis. And in tandem with their home building, you know, aspirations, buildings need to be made safe at the same time. And one can't be at the expense of the other. And, and, and you know, it can't just be acceleration of pace. It also has to be the quality needs to be there as well, because we don't want to end up with this situation all over again. Paula Shalhoub from uh, End Our Cladding Scandal.